Hi, my name is Zach, and in this tutorial we're going to take a closer look at some of the various ways you can extend Dialogtree to customize the look and feel of dialog in your project. If you don't already know, Dialogtree is a free plugin available on the Unreal Marketplace that offers an easy-to-use system for creating and editing in-game dialog. I'm going to assume that you've already looked over the Quick Start Guide as well as the tutorials on the dialog editor and queries and events. Those cover much more of the basic operation of the plugin, this one is going to serve as a survey of the various extension points the plugin includes to allow you to tailor it to your needs. Before we get down into the weeds, I want to take a moment to review a few of the major objects we'll be talking about. Let's start with the dialog controller. This is an actor that serves as a kind of bridge between your dialogues and the game world. The dialog controller manages the display of dialog and how speeches and options are presented. It also serves as a general interface for dialogue interactivity, including the starting and stopping of conversations. For example, when a speaker component attempts to start dialog, what it's actually doing is redirecting that request to the dialog controller. A huge amount of customization is possible here, up to and including creating your own custom dialog controller and blueprint. That said, for most users, the included BP basic dialog controller will work well with minimal tweaks. If you're using the default dialog controller, it makes use of a display widget. Functionally, this is just a UMG widget that implements the BI Simple Dialog Display interface. While the default dialog controller controls the behavior of dialog in your project, it outsources the actual display to its current display widget. This is done to promote flexibility, as the same basic dialog behavior can be displayed to the screen in many different ways. Why are display widgets an offshoot of the default controller and not a required part of the plugin as a whole? Basically because I could imagine a scenario where you might want to create a custom controller that bridges its display across multiple widgets, or even bypasses the need for display widgets altogether. Separating things out in this way gives you the option to use the provided display widgets or not as you see fit. Speaker components are the bridge between your characters and the dialogue. The default option carries standard information that a dialogue might expect to have. But you can extend your speaker components to include extra data or functionality however you need. An example of this extension is the provided CRPG speaker component, which includes portrait data for the speaker. Two display widgets are provided with the plugin. The default W basic dialog display will be the go-to option for most users. When used with the default dialog controller, this widget creates what I would think of as standard dialog. Think of games like Skyrim, The Witcher, and The Outer Worlds. In practice, this means presenting a single NPC speech and a list of options for the player to respond. The other provided display widget is WCRPG Dialog Display. As the name implies, this adds CRPG staples like portraits and a speech log. To get the most use out of it, CRPG speaker components should be used in place of normal speaker components. This will allow you to supply the portraits for your characters on a per-speaker level. The display widget you use can be set from the Dialog Controller's Details panel. To tweak an existing display widget, you just need a basic knowledge of UMG. The provided widgets can be found in the plugin's content folder under Display Widgets and then the Basic and CRPG folders respectively. Opening the widgets up in UMG allows you to tweak their visuals to your liking. Similarly, you can create your own display widgets from scratch. Just create a new user widget, and set it to implement the BI Simple Dialog Display interface. As with all interfaces, that will provide you with several functions to implement to hook your custom widget into the default dialog controller. These include Set Controller, which takes a dialog controller. This allows your widget to cache a reference to its dialog controller. Display Options takes an array of speech detail structs and allows you to determine how player speech options will display to the screen. Display Speech takes a single speech detail struct and a target speaker component. It allows you to determine how NPC speeches will display to the screen. On Open allows you to specify behavior to play on opening the widget. And On Close allows you to specify behavior to play on closing the widget. Even if you decide to stick with the default dialog controller, it's inevitable that you'll want to tweak it to better fit your needs. So let's take a little tour around the controller and how it can be modified. Up at the top of the event graph, we have the initialize event, which gets called from begin play. The initialize function belongs to the default controller specifically, not to the base dialog controller class. 
If you write your own controller, you may or may not want to include something similar. Essentially, all it does is add a widget of its widget type to the screen. Below that, we get into the first of our core dialog controller events with Open Display. As the name suggests, this opens the display widget and performs associated tasks like changing the input mode. Next up, we have Close Display, which is essentially just the inverse of Open Display. It closes the display widget and performs any associated tasks. Next, Display Options controls how player speech options get displayed to the screen. In the case of the default dialog controller, we pass the buck along to the display widget. The same goes for Display Speech, which is responsible for displaying an individual speech. And finally, we have Handle Missing Speaker. This is an optional event to implement. It gets called on starting the dialog when the dialog tree asset was not provided with one of its expected speaker components. Handle Missing Speaker gives you a first opportunity to address the situation. With the possible exceptions of Initialize and Handle Missing Speaker, a custom dialog controller ought to implement each of these events. Your game won't crash or anything if it doesn't, your dialogues just won't play. That said, even if you stick with the default dialog controller, there is a fair amount you can do to customize its functionality. Let's say, for example, that you want to set up a special dialog camera that flips back and forth between the various speakers. You could add functionality switching your camera on and off to the open and close display events. And under the display speech event, you could add a function or event call that sets the camera's orientation based on who's speaking. Similarly, if you want to hook in a lip sync function, you could tack it on as part of your custom display speech implementation. The point here is that every user-facing phase of dialogue has some function that you can implement yourself or otherwise modify to include whatever functionality you need. If none of this works the way you want, you're able to scrap the default controller entirely and create your own in Blueprint. The goal of this design was to create a somewhat modular approach, with default options to take the user most of the way to a complete setup with minimal effort, but with the flexibility for full customization if it's needed. The speaker component is a kind of special case when it comes to customization, given that we never really want to modify how it does its core job. Often, however, we do want to add extra functionality to help our characters better interact with dialogue. We covered this somewhat in the Queries and Events tutorial, where we made a custom speaker component with a counter to track how many times the speaker had asked a question. Another good example is the included CRPG speaker component, which includes a texture property to use as a portrait. Ultimately, this is very open-ended, so there's only so much advice I can offer here. Just know that custom speaker components are a good place to stash extra data or to add functionality that will interact with dialogue via queries or events. In this tutorial, we reviewed the major objects that can be extended to customize dialogue in your project. These include the dialogue controller, the display widget, and the speaker components. We also discussed how display widgets can be modified or replaced to customize the look of dialogue and how the dialogue controller can be modified or replaced to customize the behavior of dialogue on a more fundamental level. Finally, we discussed how the speaker component can be extended to include additional data and functionality. This concludes the series of introductory tutorials I had planned to get people up to speed with Dialogue Tree. As a brief review, the Quick Start covers how to get the plugin set up and actually playing dialogue in just a few minutes. The Editor Guide takes a detailed look at the dialogue editor, its nodes, and their properties. The Queries and Events tutorial focuses in on how you can create custom queries and events to have your dialogues interact with the rest of the game world. And finally, this tutorial explored some of the ways you can customize the plugin to fit your needs. You should now have a strong foundation for how to use Dialogue Tree in your own projects. I may add more tutorials in future as new features are added and as the need arises. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions or requests for a specific feature or a tutorial on a specific topic. The best way to reach me is probably via my Discord channel. If this video was helpful to you, please give it a like and subscribe so you get notified when videos showcasing new features come out. If you're enjoying the plugin, I would be beyond grateful if you could take a few seconds out of your day to leave me a review on the Unreal Marketplace. Finally, if you'd like to support further development on the project, you can do so on Patreon.com. Links to all of that, as well as the plugin's documentation site, will be posted in the description. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Best of luck, and happy developing.